For this last kit build of December, I am going to enjoy a Baltic Porter from Nonsuch Brewing in Winnipeg. This isn't quite as, uh, as thick and heavy as a traditional porter, but it has a lot of the same flavor characteristics. It's a very nice beer. So tonight's kit build exploits the power of the classic 555 chip. But not this one. It's this one. This monster 555 kit from Evil Mad Scientist. Some of you may remember this one from the mailbag where I opened it up. It is just the most ridiculously awesome looking kit that I've ever seen, I think. And that's saying something. So in the package, we have a basic... Ooh, we have a sticker. And we have a basic set of instructions here. Um, just how to construct it, the inventory. It has, uh, what is that, 26 transistors, uh, 17 resistors, and some mechanical parts. And that's it. That's what it takes to make a 555 timer. Uh, some basic instructions on how to solder and, uh, and assemble components onto the, the circuit board. So that makes it fairly beginner friendly. Information about identifying the resistors, which is very cool. Some instructions on identifying the transistors and then the mechanical stuff. And even a sample circuit to experiment with. But I think what I'll do to test it out is substitute it for this 555 in this circuit here, which I'm sure most of us recognize as the classic 555 and 4017 timer circuit. If you're a beginner in electronics and you haven't put together one of these, go find my video on it and uh, and take a look because it is, as I said, a classic circuit that you know every tinkerer should have played with at one point in their tinkering, playing hobby career. So let's continue with the unboxing. We have some mechanical hardware, which we'll need at the end. We have the biggest chip legs that this reporter has ever seen. Those are awesome. Then we have the bag of components and the circuit board. Oh, and the circuit board is a very, very thick board. That is like three millimeters thick. That is one chunky board, but it's going to be mechanically stable, which is a very nice. And then for the eight pins, it's actually got uh, screw terminals um, or threaded knob kind of things. So you can just put your wires under it. And it's just uh, got it broken up into the four different sort of sub-modules that make up the 555 internally. I'm not going to go too deep into the theory on this, but there is a lot of that on their website. Let me show you. So among the things on their web page is that same page that came in the uh, kit. There is their data sheet for this kit. And they actually make two different versions of it. They make the discrete component one, which I've got here. They also make a surface mount version, which the legs actually look like a surface mount component too. But the components on it are surface mount. I, electrically, it's exactly the same, but it's just fun. So here's the block diagram of what's actually inside of 555. We have at the start here, a voltage divider consisting of three resistors, which creates a one third VCC and a two thirds VCC. Um, the one-third goes to a comparator, and the two-thirds goes to a comparator. So as the 555 is working, it is watching for voltages at the trigger and threshold inputs to cross those two thresholds of one-third and two-thirds VCC. And that's when those two comparators go into a flip-flop, cause that flip-flop to change states from high to low, and that drives the output, which is on pin number three through the output driver circuit. There's a couple of other minor things going on inside here. There's a reset that you can uh, uh, cause the flip-flop to not change state if you pull that reset line. And there's a discharge which we use in the A-stable uh, circuit to you know, discharge the timing capacitor which will take the, uh, the threshold from uh, from the two third or from the high of two thirds to the low of one third and cause the comparators to switch over again. Now they have on their web page 
this nine page document, which is the full principles of operation of what's going on inside of 555 timer. I'll link to it so that you can go and read it. It's not absolutely necessary to know this, but it is really interesting information. It's just too boring for me to read the whole thing out loud to you. Well, put you to sleep and nobody wants that. Anyway, back to their, what they call data sheet. Um, here is all the components. I guess I should go back and finish going through those. Anyway, there's the components in the kit. Um, and it goes through assembly instructions. Aha, there, there is the schematic for the kit that we have. Um, and all the 555 is internally is these 20, did I say 26 transistors and 17 resistors? set up in various different configurations. We've got a couple of familiar Darlingtons there. Another couple of Darlington pairs there. Now, there's only one thing that's significantly different from the actual internals of a real 555, and that's these two transistors here, Q19A and 19B. In a proper uh, 555, those are a single transistor with, I believe it is, two emitter outputs which is a super uncommon component and it would probably cost the price of the whole kit just to buy one of those. So they've essentially duplicated its function with these two transistors here. Okay, let's go back to going through these components before I got distracted there. So this, this is a clever little thing here. It's, it's just nice presentation. Um, there is most of the resistors there's a few other resistors of uh, all of the same value in here, but this is an interesting way of uh, doing that. And I've never, s I knew this looked familiar when I opened it and I made a comment back to, uh, back to the company that I thought it was pretty cool. And they said that this is reminiscent of how old sewing needles were sold, you know, a little needle book. So they thought this was a pretty cool way of presenting the, uh, the resistors. And then in the bag, we have seven resistors of the same value. And we have the selection of transistors. There are two different types of transistors. We have NPN and PNP transistors. Very well labeled. Obviously just straight off, uh, off the real tape for pick and place. But that is a nice way of presenting them in the kit. That kind of thing isn't, is just preliminary. So that's not really what we're here for tonight. We are here to assemble this board. Well, that's interesting. The board is so thick it doesn't fit in those notches. <laughs> it does fit in the ones that are sitting that way. So that's what I shall do. So according to the instructions, they recommend adding all the resistors first. Starting with the seven four point K resistors, then all the rest of the various ones based on that table. I'm just going to trim one end of the resistors off the carrier tape just to make them a little bit easier to deal with here and pluck them out one at a time give them a gentle bend and find their locations on the board uh, R1 is might as well start there this is kind of neat too they've got it all labeled from left to right so R1, 2 and 3 are up there R16, 17 are down the bottom right corner very logical, very nicely laid out. Another nice thing, they have not only the schematic uh, identifier, in this case R3, screen printed on the board, they also have the value of it. So technically you don't even need the instruction sheet or the, uh, the parts list. You can do it all just based on what's written on the board. That is a very nice touch. Next is R7 of these 4.7K resistors. And I am just giving these a little bend on the back as I always do, just to make them hold in place. And the last of these 4.7Ks is R15. 11, 12, 15, down there. They also got all the blocks just marked out. I think I pointed that out, but it matches the schematic so well and the block diagram as well. This thing really is a learning tool. 
plus just a fun kit to make. Right, so after soldering those in off camera, because you've seen me solder a thousand times, um, we have the next set of resistors. And Nick, notice this attention to detail. The resistors are on the card in the schematic identification order. R2 820 ohms, R4 1K, R5 10K, R6. That's, that's brilliant. That's just amazing attention to detail. I think I'm going to have to get some more kits from these guys. They're, they're expensive. They're super high quality though. This is just impressive. Anyway, so 820 ohms is R2, which is over here. R4 is 1K, the next one in line. R5 is 10K, again. <laughs> I just, I'm having trouble getting over that. I have never seen that kind of attention to detail in a kit before. So one of the cool things you'll be able to do with this thing when it's built up as a teaching tool is you can f set up static input voltages and just follow the voltages through here, change them, follow them through again, watch them on a scope internally, what's going on inside the circuit. It's, it's just a great little teaching tool. Anyway, I got distracted. Where was I? Uh, the 15 key resistor, which is R10 right there. 220K is R14, sorry, 220 ohms. Why did I say 220K? My brain got stuck for a second. And the last one, this 100 ohm resistor, which is right there, R16. And back to soldering again. And then the instructions say all the transistors go in. Um, it is suggesting to put in all of the 20, er, oh. it's suggesting to start off with all of the 3904 transistors. Make sure that you do them right. Again, very beginner friendly instructions. Very good. So these 3904 transistors are all the NPN transistors. And the 3906 are all the PNP. Just to keep it nice and straightforward. Um, very, very similar characteristics on both of them. The first four, uh, 3904s are in this threshold comparator down here. Let's do that. That's nice. Those bends on the transistor legs, uh, that were on the carrier strip makes it sit just nicely on the board. And there's a bit of spring tension, so it's holding it in place too. I think I'm just going to cut these off here. So I don't have to worry about that tape being in the way. There's still going to be lots of lead left for insertion and soldering after that. I normally don't do this when I'm building a kit, but I think I'm going to take the time because this is such a nice kit and just make sure the components are all lined up. That's just completely aesthetic. It doesn't affect the function of the kit, but I think I'm going to do it anyway. And so if you are trying to make them all line up straight, like I was doing with those LED kits the last few weeks, solder one leg, flip it over, make sure everything is nice and straight and aligned, and then solder the rest of the leads. And carry on with the rest of these NPN transistors. So 3904, so the threat, the trigger comparator is all the PNPs, all of them. Huh. So we'll go on to the threshold, which has some more of the NPNs in it. And again, paying attention to the way it's drawn on the silk screen, because that indicates the orientation of the transistors. It's very well labeled on there. It has the flat spot uh, for the shape of the transistor, but it also has emitter, base, and collector labeled right on the board. So if you choose to substitute your own transistor of a slightly different type, as long as it's similar enough, then you can figure out where the pins go. That is just so awesome. Oops, I almost did get that one backwards, even though I was just yammering on about 
how well labeled it is to prevent you from making stupid mistakes. That's the downside of talking too much while I'm doing this. I'm not thinking so much about what I'm doing. All right, there is all the NPN transistors. Now we just repeat with the PNP. And there, we have all the components soldered onto the board. That went together very easily. There's no real gotchas on there. Just the way they've got it laid out made it go so smooth. However, I am going to clean up the back of the board. It is a nice tidy kit and I would like to keep it that way. Now that's why I don't clean boards. I think I've just made it worse. Damn it. Oh well, it doesn't affect the function. Well, let's continue on. Next we have the legs to assemble onto this. So in the hardware we have some screws, some insulated standoffs, and the screw terminals for the electrical connections. And there's how it goes together. The screws go through the board, the insulated standoffs, or insulated washers, I guess, is a proper term for them, go in there, and then you just thread into the aluminum. There we go. And just screw that in. There we go, that's solidly in there. Probably should back that off actually a half turn and get these next ones in. There's number two. I'm not going to swing them, I'm not going to be able to swing number three into place easily. Oh well. There's number two in place. I can just feel that it's in the right spot. I'll just get that started and then I'll do number three, which is going to be the trickiest one. There's something to nudge that into place with. That'll do. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. And it's probably in the instructions if I bothered to read them more carefully. But this is working. And there we have the stand slash legs assembled. Nothing left to do now but to put the electrical connections on. So there's a red and a black one for the VCC and ground, following standard conventions, and then these gray ones for all the signal pins. And you just thread in there like that. So I am going to test this guy out by substituting it for the 555 in this circuit. But first, I think I'm just going to do a basic smoke test. So I'm going to connect 5 volts and ground up. So on my power supply, I've got 5 volts set up. And I've got it set to just a 10 milliamp current limit. So if something's wrong on here, it this should go into current limit. And it won't give it enough current to blow anything up. That's my hope. So there we go. It's not really drawing any significant amount of current. Ten, uh, one milliamp. That's good. And to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to pop this up to six volts. The circuit can take up to 18. But if I do that, six volts, two thirds VCC should be four volts. Right? Right. So there's ground. And the control voltage is there. Hmm. That's interesting. Have I made a mistake? Because that should be 4 volts right there. At the control voltage. Okay, that's correct. Because there's only one resistor between VCC and the control voltage. And there should be two resistors, so... About 8k. Oh, there's other stuff going on there too. Never mind. Much, much, much later. 
so after much messing around with this and uh and playing with it i have discovered i made a mistake do you see it yet yeah q25 i've got flipped around and after all the noise i was making about how easy it was to put everything in and how hard it was to make a mistake i made a dumbass mistake it happens it's a bit of a battle to get it out, but I did get it out. And I didn't even kill it, which is amazing. So I will solder it back in the correct way and try this again. Cross your fingers. Let's see if this works this time. So I've tested my circuit on the circuit board with this 555 here. And then I've just plugged these wires in the same place as the pins and... Oh, finally, we have liftoff. That's what I was looking for. So now it should just be a simple matter of connecting up power and ground for this uh, 4017 circuit and taking the output and removing it from that LED and putting it to the input of this circuit. And there it works. Huh. One stupid mistake, not paying attention, and I messed myself up for, uh, you don't even want to know how long it took me to, uh, to find that. Yeah, I guess that's what I get for being inattentive and talking too much while I'm trying to uh, pay attention to my soldering, isn't it? There we go. The biggest 555 timer in the world, probably. All made with discrete components, which gives you the opportunity to poke around inside the circuit and find out exactly what it's doing at the nuts and bolts level. A very, very cool little thing. And despite my ham-fistedness, I did not destroy it. But I was prepared just in case I let the magic smoke out to, uh, to signify it. But I didn't have to. So that is excellent. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging out with me and, uh, and watching to the end. I appreciate that. And, and for watching all of my kit builds through December, this was a lot of fun. I may do this next year. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> let me know down in the comments section as usual. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping me buy these kits throughout the year and buying me a beer. Happy New Year. Um, oh, and thanks to Evil Mad Scientist for making such a cool kit. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. Um, if that's when you're watching this, I will talk to you later.